carrier is a world of experts and specialists dedicated to air operations, one of the most complex forms of naval warfare. Every man on deck is an expert in the teams of specialists responsible for putting the planes in the air. The aircraft are specialists too, the best of their kind for the jobs they've been assigned in the upcoming mission. An E-2C will be the high altitude platform for command and control. The A-6s will deliver the ordnance. The F-14s will fly barrier. The A-7s will handle flak suppression. And the EA-6Bs will protect them, providing an electronic shield during the most critical minutes of the mission. Protection. That's the job of the prowler, the EA-6B, the most effective electronic warfare airplane in the world today. In a matter of minutes after launch, the enemy will know that our airplanes are on the way. Picking them up on radar scopes that clearly show their position, altitude, course, and speed. Radar is fundamental to detection and weapon control. Defensively, the enemy can use it for guiding surface-to-air missiles and controlling air intercepts. Offensively, he can use it to locate our fleet units, control his long-range anti-ship missiles, and direct his own airstrikes. Radar returns are an essential source of instant combat intelligence. The enemy depends on them. The job of the prowler is to blind the enemy's radar generating a blizzard of electronic snow that jams his radar scopes, denying him information urgently needed for command and control. Emissions from enemy radars in a wide range of frequencies crowd the environment as he seeks information from ships that bristle with antennas. Emissions from our own radars increase an electronic density that is becoming more crowded and complex as the development of new electronic weaponry continues on both sides. The EA-6B can jam enemy radars without affecting our own. Keeping one step ahead, it has given us a significant advantage in electronic warfare at every point in time. It's the only aircraft of its kind dedicated exclusively to fighting naval battles of electronic warfare. A pilot and three electronic countermeasures officers, ECMOs, fly the airplane and operate its jamming system, a third generation of the ALQ-99 that first proved out in Southeast Asia. Emissions of enemy radars are picked up at long range by the sensitive surveillance receivers in the tail fin pod. Analyzed by computer, they are displayed in the cockpit. Symbols indicate the type of emission. Frequency and azimuth scales show the location of each emitter. Parameters of enemy emitters are in computer memory. The ECMOs continually assess and react to the threat environment. When our strike force comes within range of enemy defenses, the jammers are activated. Indicators show that the transmitters have taken over, directing high power radiation to jam each target. If an unknown emitter appears, the ECMO can make a manual entry that orders the computer to analyze the signal and assign the appropriate jammer to it. The enemy may employ counter-countermeasures, but his primary source of target information is out. He can't use it against our forces. Since the first prowler was introduced in 1972, it has come of age by meeting the steadily increasing challenges of electronic warfare at sea. Today, as a tactical aircraft, its speed, range, and maneuverability are compatible with strike aircraft. As a weapon system, it can be armed as needed from its own electronic arsenal. Five jammer pods, each with a fore and aft station, provide a total of 10 very high-powered jamming transmitters. Coverage of enemy frequency bands can be complete. With the appropriate mixture of pods and fuel tanks, 
the Prowler can do its job on missions of force defense, war at sea, or projection of power over land. Prowler crews are acutely aware of the importance of their job and the full significance of their missions. They are thoroughly trained as Navy ECMOs and as operators of the systems in the EA-6B. Graduates of basic and intermediate electronic warfare schools, they complete their Prowler training at Whidbey Island Naval Air Station. This morning we're going to talk about the CSD overheat system in the aircraft. This is a system that lets us know when we have problems or possible impending electrical failure. First, there are the specifics of flying one of the Navy's most advanced combat aircraft. At any time that we have an overheat situation that exists in the constant speed drive, a temperature that exceeds 260 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, on the caution lights panel you will have a CSD light that will come on. Once power is applied then, to the, aircraft, the mechanical operation of the jamming system and its for, utilization in tactical deployment. Cold lights on the, jammer pod control box, the system is fully automated, but the ECMO's evaluations and decisions make the most of its capabilities. Get airborne now with the pod. Final training is an exacting schedule of flight tests in a computer-controlled simulator that can reproduce any in-flight conditions, including emergencies. Computer-generated images will present the pilot with a realistic view through the canopy as he launches, maneuvers, and makes arrested landings. Instructors working through the computer can call up programs to simulate any onboard failure or malfunction. The illusion is complete, and crew responses can be accurately evaluated. Problems for the ECMOs are fed in from separate control positions testing their ability to work the system in any situation that may arise during a mission. Pilots and ECMOs train as a team for the team effort that adds up to optimum overall performance. The capability is there in both crews and aircraft. Performance in answering demands that are increasing in intensity and complexity. Well, the EA-6B is the only tactical carrier aircraft that has a true electronic warfare capability. Uh, we have a, a set number of them organic to each of our air wings and each, to each carrier. And they're programmed right in with the, the strikes, uh, the defensive uh, tactics, uh, the entire air wing operation. They're very, very important. And we will be dependent on them as we said before in most scenarios. In a force defense scenario, the Prowler protects our own fleet units. Orbiting at high altitude, it works in conjunction with the E2C, gathering information for relay to the force commander. The enemy is looking for us with his long-range search radar. As soon as his signals are picked up, the ECMOs activate their jammers. The enemy won't be able to see us, but his signals tell the prowler where he is and what type of platform the signals are coming from. When his surface search and fire control radars are switched on, they are picked up and reported instantly and immediately jammed. Missile seekers can let him aim anti-ship missiles from up to 100 miles away, except when they are picked up by the prowler and jammed. The Prowler is on station and on target, doing one of the jobs it was designed for. The other job is basic in the scenarios for strike missions. EA-6B tactics uh, during the mission will be to jam the acquisition, GCI, uh, fire control, and uh, AAA radars. The NAVROP profile, a couple of considerations, will be silent to 60 nautical miles and we'll turn uh, our jammers on at that point, leave them on for the uh, remainder of the route until the egress. We'll stay with you over the target, come on out and pick you up on, uh, on the right out. The overall objective is to put this airplane and its capabilities in position with the strike group in order to afford maximum protection for our strike aircraft going in and out so we have maximum effectiveness, minimum losses. Knowing that the EA-6B is a long, even in the practice problems that we run on a day-to-day -day basis for training, uh, 
gives us gives us all a uh, an increased feeling of confidence. See, the airplane is tremendously capable. Uh, it uh, does the job that it was designed to do. Does it extremely well. Uh, I'm very glad they're on our side. We have to have it if we hope to get to the target, do the job properly, and get back safely. Intelligence reports that the target is defended by long-range SAM sites, short-range SAM sites, and radar-directed AAA batteries. There's an adjacent EWGCI site with three early warning radars and three height finders. At the moment, EW radars and height finders show that the enemy is maintaining only routine surveillance. The attack group is clearly visible to the enemy but he is unaware that EA-6Bs are in the formation, flying with their jamming systems in a surveillance mode. Both sides are electronically blinded when the flight is masked by a terrain feature. But the enemy has been alerted, and when the flight is in the clear again, the prowlers find that the enemy has switched on more EW radars and oriented narrow beam acquisition radars toward their last known position. The attacker's course, speed, and position are clear. They can be headed toward several possible targets. GCI symbols appear, showing that the enemy is launching his own aircraft. At the 60 mile mark, as planned, the prowler is switched to radiate, and the screens report optimum effectiveness. When the group splits for their attack courses, they are completely covered. Their electronic shield will continue to protect them as long as they need it. We know we've done our job when we launch out on a strike with 12 or 15 aircraft and we come back and uh, we still have 12 or 15 aircraft. Today's Prowler is the third update since it was first introduced. Improvements in the system have kept up with the rapidly expanding technology of electronic warfare. Tomorrow's Prowler will meet tomorrow's demands as work continues on further improvements that will keep the system ahead of the threat. There is room and flexibility for extended performance. Updating capability without expensive redesign or modification Tomorrow's Prowler will do more, but until tomorrow, today's Prowler will continue to be the most powerful and versatile electronic warfare aircraft in the skies, serving both the United States Navy and Marine Corps. The job of the Prowler is saving lives, ships and aircraft, and increasing the effectiveness of missions. No other airplane in the world can match it.